Greetings from the GNU Linux Users Group. Welcome to the very first video on reverse engineering category in CTS. In our introduction to CTS video, we have discussed that what is reverse engineering, but let's speedrun the concept once again. Before understanding the term reverse engineering, you need to understand the term engineering in software field. In software field, basically creating an application requires writing and debugging a lot of code, and it can be written in any language or in any operating system. Programmers write and debug until they get the end product and this entire process is known as engineering and when you try to reverse this application to find how it's working but the catch is we are not provided with the source code all we get is the binary file may be written in, in any language or compiled in any OS. Reverse engineering is one of the essential techniques used by cybersecurity researchers to exploit understand the entire functionality of a software. It can be used to crack games and softwares to test the security and integrity of applications. It also is used to reverse malware to understand how it affects systems. Disclaimer, it seems to be one of the hardest topics of hacking and at first glance it's true. I mean who cares what does the assembly of a program does like it's 1950. But here's the catch, to exploit and protect third party softwares and gain your reputation as a hacker, you need to know what's happening behind the scenes and which is impossible without the source code of the program. And since we generally have only the program itself with us, it becomes harder for us to find a proper attack vector to exploit it. That's where reverse engineering comes in. With a good knowledge of computer architecture and assembly and with the help of some tools, one can basically find the logic of any program and exploit it. In reverse engineering, we'll stick with the former. One thing I would like to add is that this is not something you learn in a day or a month. Reversing binaries is developed through experience which sometimes takes years to become a pro in this field. So don't get disheartened if you feel like you are not learning, it just takes some time and practice. So enough of introduction, let's get into the first part. Since in reverse engineering, we will be basically working with executables, the notion of what an executable is arises. To make it clear, executables are nothing but file containing the machine code of the program which includes the instruction the processor needs to execute, the data needed to run the program, the debugging information with several other things. Now there are several factors on which the structure of an executable depends including the OS, the compiler we are using and the CPU architecture. So to make it clear, the file formats that we will be dealing here will be C executables for Linux OS and will be running on an AMD64 architecture CPU. So the viewers are recommended to have a Linux OS or a virtual machine setup in their computer. A link on which to on how to do it will be provided in the description. There are several steps performed while a C source code file is converted to generate an executable. What basically happens is that at first an assembly code is generated which involves operations like move, subtract or several other operations to run the whole process. But this assembly code is still not understandable to the CPU. Machine code involving ones and zeros have to be generated to finally make an executable that can run the program. But in this process of generating machine code from assembly, another step is involved in which a object file, which is basically the machine code, but with links to other libraries used in the program is generated. This object file has the machine code but lacks the code of those crucial libraries used in it, making it unsuitable to execute. The linker completes this step by combining these libraries to generate the actual machine code of the program. But at each of these steps, some amount of information about the source code is lost and this makes the process of reversing at each step harder. So let's write a basic C code and try to reverse engineer it by yourself. Over here, I have written a very basic string comparison program using the string comparison function strcmp of c. Let's open the man page and see what strcmp actually does. Over here we can see strcmp takes two input or car pointers which basically means array or string and returns an integer based on these conditions. It returns 0 if both of them are equal and returns a non-zero value in other cases. Since we will be focusing on both the strings being equal, we will not dig deep into these other cases. Ok, now let's get back to our code. 
Now as you can see here, we have added a few basic header files which includes code for basic and trivial functions we are gonna use over here. Like the string.h header, which includes the code for the strcmp function we are going to use. Now over here, we are in taking input of the string using the gets function and comparing it with this hello basic if string using the strcmp function. Now as we saw in our main page, strcmp returns 0 when both of the strings are equal and else it returns a non-zero value. So here we can see that we are using this invert operator which just does nothing but inverses non-zero values to 0 and vice versa. So this means the if condition will only be executed when both the strings are equal and a granted message will be printed on the screen. Now let's compile it using the GCC compiler. So as we can see our code is compiled to generate this text executable. Before going all into reversing, let's try to run it once. As expected, it's asking us for a key. Let's enter any random string. It shows us the message denied. We know for sure that if we give the input hello basic rev, it will print granted because we wrote the code ourselves. But what for someone who lacks the source code? Let's see what basic reversing approach we can take then. First we will open our code using GDP, which is the popular GNU debugger made for the purpose of debugging C code. We can set breakpoints, C register values during runtime and a whole lot using it. But for now, let's focus on finding the assembly using it. There are two flavors of assembly language present in the whole context of reversing. The at and syntax and the Intel syntax. at and is now outdated so we will be using only the Intel syntax in this whole series. Now we can disassemble our main function of the executable to see what the assembly looks like. You can see it can be hard for anyone to just read the entire assembly and understand the code logic at the beginning. So to ease our task, there are some powerful reverse engineering tools like Ghidra, IDA, Binary Ninja, Radare, etc. In this series, we will be using Ghidra since it's free and open source. Now Ghidra is an open source disassembler cum decompiler developed by NSA which can generate the assembly code and along with it give a brief image of what the program code might look like. A link on how to install and set up Ghidra is already given in the description. Now let's look for ourselves. Let's open Ghidra and import our binary. On importing, we are shown a bunch of information regarding the file types, memory addresses, etc. Ok, now let's analyze it. It takes some time to analyze, so please be patient during the process. Ghidra is a very powerful tool and have many features and plugins. So at very first glance, you would find a very complex interface with lots of sections, but without any time wasting, let's focus on the main part. Here you can find the main function which is our function of interest and open it. Here in the right hand side, we can see the decompiled code produced by Ghidra for the same executable. The difference is clear, right? We can see that Ghidra does a much better job in reversing the program for us and is easier for beginners to learn. Pseudocode makes our life easier and if you remember what strcmp returns after a successful string comparison is 0 and we can see after we give the input the value gets stored in ivar and on the very next line it's compared to 0 and if the comparison is successful it prints a granted message. This shows that to print the granted message we have to input this string and like this we successfully reverse the logic of the program. So as you have seen, there are powerful decompilers which is our task and we can get a pretty decompiled code from the ELF. 
So when we try to focus on what's going inside the ELF instead of what's the behavior of ELF or what it is doing, this type of analysis is called static analysis. Now there are some common tools which you can use like strings, object dump, advanced disassemblers like binary ninja, Ghidra, cutter, etc. Sometimes people may try to reverse software and may not have Ghidra or object dump installed or even not have a Linux system present. For this, there's another online debugger present known as Binary Ninja or Binja. For Binary Ninja, you don't have to install anything on your local machine. Just open the online console, upload the executable and it provides you the assembly code and the control flow graph of the code. So open Binary Ninja Cloud by going to this site. A link is also provided in the description and create an account for now as we will be needing it from the next videos. Coming to dynamic analysis, you can say which is the reverse of static analysis. Here we try to analyze the binary during the runtime. There are many times where static analysis of a huge code base becomes tough. At that point, dynamic analysis comes into play and may reduce the challenge at hand. There are some tools which can do the same like LTrace. It can be used to trace library calls, stress to trace system call and GDB, which is the popular GNU debugger. That's it for this video. In the upcoming video, we will learn some basic reversing techniques with the help of teaching a binary. I will be using Ghidra and Binary Ninja Cloud version. The actual software is a paid one, but we can use the cloud instance for free. So I would request you to make a free account on the Binja Cloud platform. Thank you. Back, back, back from the dead.